Let's look at the third example, rotational motion. Suppose we have a Ferris wheel that has a radius of 35 feet that stands 8 feet off the ground. The Ferris wheel makes one complete rotation counterclockwise every 30 seconds. Develop a set of parametric equations to model the situation. Assume the origin is directly below the center of the Ferris wheel at ground level and you start your ride at the point negative 35, 43. Okay, so how do we attack this problem? Well, first of all, let's start by drawing a sketch of the situation. So I have this Ferris wheel which has a radius of 35 feet and it stands eight feet off the ground, obviously not drawn to scale. We are rotating, rotating counterclockwise. And now let's at a rate 30 seconds per revolution. Now we're starting at the point negative 35, 43. The center here is at 0, comma 43, the radius plus the distance off the ground. So negative 35, 43 will put us right here at the left edge of our Ferris wheel. Now we want to think about how to describe horizontal and vertical information because we're moving, if we think about this, we're moving across the Ferris wheel. We start at one point and at some point we're on the other side of the Ferris wheel over here. So we're moving back and forth horizontally and we're also moving up and down. At some point I'm at the bottom of the Ferris wheel and at some time I'm at the top. And that is a repetitive process. So we have a couple of equations, or a couple of functions, that repeat themselves, are sinusoids. So each of these motions should be able to be described by a sinusoid, where I move from one location to another and then back to the original location. So let's think about what's going on horizontally. I start at the point negative 35 horizontally, and I end at the point positive 35. So if I think about that on a graph, I'm starting at the point negative 35 at some point, at some point in time initially, and later I'm at a point positive 35. And then I return to negative 35 as I complete a revolution. So my graph is going to look like this. And that's going to take me 30 seconds. Looks an awful lot like a sinusoid, doesn't it? Let's talk about what's happening vertically. Here I start at this point 43. And at some point, I return to the point 43 when I'm on the other side of the Ferris wheel. But before I reach the 43, I drop all the way down to 8 feet above the ground. Later, as I go through the top of the Ferris wheel, I end up at 35 units above 43, so 78. So I see something that looks like this. And if I followed that trend, I'd come back down to 43 off the edge of the board here. So I look at these two graphs and I try and come up with equations to describe them. They look like sinusoids, but which sinusoids? 
if I look at my horizontal graph, I can see that I start at a minimum, go through a midpoint, then to a maximum, and then back through a midpoint, and then back to a minimum. Here, my vertical information, I start at a midpoint, go down to a minimum, go back to a midpoint, and go up to a maximum before I return to the midline again. So which functions, which of my sinusoid functions would generate these? Well, if we look at our four possibilities, we can look at these four types of sinusoids, the sine of x, the negative sine of x, the cosine of x, and the negative cosine of x, and see which behavior is similar to the ones we've just described. If we look at the sine of x, we can see that we start at a midpoint, go to a maximum, back to a midpoint, minimum, back to the midpoint. Now, negative sine of x flips the graph and so reverses that pattern. We still start at a midpoint, but go minimum, mid, max, min. Cosine, on the other hand, starts at a maximum, drops to a mid, goes down to a min, back to the mid, and then back to a max. Negative cosine flips our cosine, starts at a minimum, goes to mid, max, mid, min. So if we look at the, those and go back to our horizontal motion, started at a min, and then rows to a midpoint. That's our negative cosine graph. So that's going to be our starting point for our horizontal description or model. So we're going to use a negative cosine to describe the sinusoid that we've sketched out here. Now if we think of our general sinusoidal equation where our function a sine bx minus d plus c. We can see that we're starting with no phase shift, so d is going to be 0. Only we're not going to use sine, we're going to use negative cosine in this case. Our amplitude is going to be the distance from our midline, which is 0 in this case, to our max or our min, which is 35. So the only thing we haven't dealt with yet is our B value or our period. Our period is, one rev is the amount of time it takes to cross, go through one revolution, or 30 seconds. So with a period of 30 seconds, our B value will be 360 over the period. which turns out to be 12. So that x equation is going to be negative 35 cosine 12t, and the other two values are 0. Our y value, we need to figure out which of our four sinusoids we want to use, and we go from a mid to a min to a mid to a max. So let's check our descriptions. A mid to a min to a mid to a max is right here. So negative sine x. So the amplitude is going to be the same. It's still going to be 35. So we've got negative 35 sine. The period's the same, so our coefficient for b is also the same. But now we don't have any phase displacement, but we do have a shift in our sinusoidal axis up to the center of our Ferris wheel. So we're going to add 43. And we've created our parametric equations to describe our Ferris wheel. <laughs>